Hi, Koen here, a student of Fontes University Applied Sciences, Eindhoven in the Netherlands. I made this video with another student to explain how a thermoacoustic engine works and I kind of like to please people with the sound of it. In a few seconds you will see a test tube that is heated and hear the sound it creates. Please enjoy. In the video you saw that a test tube with steel wool inside it was heated. After some time, sound is generated due to the heat difference of the two sides of the steel wool. But why does this happen? Well, first I have to introduce you into two basic thermodynamic systems. A heat engine and a heat pump. This place here, heat engine and a heat pump. There is one fundamental difference and it is that a heat engine produces work because of the transfer of heat into a colder environment. Here, we start with heat in a hot environment, transfer this into a cold environment and we get work. A heat pump, however, transfers heat from a colder environment into a warmer environment by introducing work to it, like a refrigerator. We start here with heat from the colder environment. We use work to transfer this heat into a warmer environment. The video you just saw with the test tube can be classified as a heat engine because heat is transferred from hot to low. To understand our heat engine we look at the so-called pressure volume diagram where pressure is graphed against volume. In this diagram four curves can be seen. The curves represent what would happen in theory. Curve 1 represents a gas package that is expanding shown over here. This is because of the heat introduced by the flame into the system. The temperature of the gas will be higher than that of the steel wool. Here will be a flow of energy from the gas into the steel wool. This curve represents the work done by the gas. The gas will drop in pressure because of the energy flow into the steel wool. Curve 2. Here the gas will cool down. Because of the pressure drop, the volume of the packaged gas will get smaller seen in curve 3 over here. Here the steel wool will be warmer than the package of gas and there will be a flow of energy from the steel wool into the gas. This curve represents the work done on the gas. At curve 4, the pressure will rise because of the increase of temperature by the flame. And this closes the cycle. The cycle will exist if a certain temperature difference of the hot and cold sides are realized. Inside the curves, a green oval represents what really will happen. The surface of this green oval is equal to the amount of work done by the thermoacoustic engine. The work done results in moving the air and so in creating an audible sound. The thermoacoustic engine uses a standing wave in a test tube to make the sound. This is because of the shape of the glass test tube, which is closed on one side and open on the other side. There are more efficient thermoacoustic heat engines, but the design is relatively simple and the aim of the experiment is a proof of concept. So for now it's good enough. The length of a test tube is 14.7 cm and a closed tube is known to have a resonant frequency equal to one-fourth of the wavelength. With this information, the resonant frequency of the system can be determined by this equation. We take 340 meter per second for the speed of sound. So the theory predicts that the resonant frequency is at 578 Hz at the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. The frequency is measured in the first video and determined to be 567 Hz with an accuracy of 8 Hz. The theoretical and practical determined resonance frequencies thus seem to correspond with each other. Now you should understand why the test tube is generating sound by creating a heat difference between the two sides of the steel wool. But is this also reversible? To use sound waves to create a temperature difference? Well, 
it turns out it is possible. We used a test tube with some steel wool and a sheet of hard plastic to create the setup you see here. The test tube is inserted into the hard plastic and covers the speaker with a diameter of 13 cm. First we used a speaker in a box where the plate was approximately 2 cm from the cones on the speaker, but that did not work. Now it is directly on top of it, and it works. We are curious to see the temperature changes during the experiment. Therefore, we use three K-type thermocouples, one for the hot side of the steel wool, one for the cold side, and one for the temperature of the surrounding air. Here you see the measurement setup we built. This is a data logger to log the temperature. A function generator with an amplifier is used to generate the electrical signal for the speaker. As you can see, a frequency of 571.5 Hz is used. This has been determined empirically by searching near the theoretical and practical resonant frequency where the greatest temperature difference was achieved. Notice the rapid change in temperature when the generator is switched on. In the graph, the measured temperature of the three thermocouples are graphed against time. It shows that the temperature difference is created with a maximum of 23 degrees Celsius. This shows that a thermoacoustic device like this can also be used as a heat pump. We would like you to thank you for looking at our video and hope that you understand the basic operating principles of a thermoacoustic device. If someone through watching this video became interested in physics, maybe a career in something like this suits you, Fontes University of Applied Sciences has open date throughout the year and this also for the technical physics study in Eindhoven. So just come and have a look. Thanks again and have a good one.